What is happening guys? Welcome back to Redbeard's Garage and today we're talking horsepower and how to get the most out of your valve train in your high horsepower build. Uh, specifically speaking, chromoly push rods. Now when you're doing a build like this where we have a head that's been milled 65 thousandths, we're using ratio rockers, we're using a bunch of different parts that came with stock of course, and we also have a pretty aggressive cam in there, you're going to want to make sure you're using the right length push rod to get all that valve train movement that you possibly can to get the valve to open up its maximum amount in your build. Chromoly push rods are lighter than stock and also way stronger than your stock push rods, so it's going to be a definite upgrade when you're running uh, aggressive cams and ratio rockers and stuff. So uh, we have linked in the video's description all the different sizes of chromoly push rods as well as the cut to length versions. We'll be doing a video later showing you how to do the cut to length ones. Uh, it'll use the same process of measuring what size push rod you need, but we'll just basically show you how to cut and press the ends in the cut to length push rods. So with this particular build, this is a Ghost 212 engine. We did a flat top piston. We also had the piston Cerakoted and the block and everything. We did a billet rod, billet flywheel, billet side cover, and we're using Go Power Sports Stage 5 head. This head has double valve springs, it has billet retainers, it has the biggest valves you can put in one of these heads. We also got it Cerakoted so it looks nice and it's gonna help hold the heat in the combustion chamber instead of leaking off in our head. So this is not the way it's gonna look when you get it stocked. So a couple things we're gonna to need to check the length uh, that we need of push rods. So we're gonna need a stock valve spring. The reason we're gonna need the stock valve spring is because another tool we're gonna to need is an adjustable push rod. And this is basically a push rod that you can get that's all aluminum. And you can stretch it out or shrink it down to find out what size you need. If we was to use this push rod with the stock double valve springs that come in this head, it would bend this. So we need to put you can check either the exhaust or intake we're going to be doing the intake today uh, and it's the same process once you check the intake it's going to be the same push rod on both sides so you're going to want to install a stock valve spring because it's so weak and won't damage your uh your adjustable push rod another tool we're going to need is a dial indicator these are super cheap uh, and they're really handy to have for stuff like this you can get these in our amazon links down below we have all the tools and all the parts we're using on this engine located down below and those do help us continue to do these style videos so the support is much appreciated another thing you're going to need is some way to measure the push rod uh, a crude way would be a measuring tape that probably isn't going to work so you're going to need a set of calipers. You can buy a set like these at the parts store for $15, $20 and these will work great. So first we need to pull out our double valve spring that's in this head and slap in a stock valve spring and we're going to use a valve spring compressor tool. Now shown on screen is the best valve spring compressor tool on the market. It's super affordable on Amazon and uh, again it's located down below and this thing is so handy doing these small heads so I highly recommend getting this compressor set. So we have our valve spring compressor set up in this little vise from Harbor Freight. Uh, we basically set it in there, tighten down this hat, and it'll grab onto that valve, valve retainer. Then we can just tighten it down. You can see that it's pushing it away from those keepers. Once we get it tightened about that much, use a magnetic screwdriver. Again, we're only pulling out one, and we're going to do the intake side. So we pull that out, and we can just let this loose. Lean it over. We're going to remove the valve springs. Now we can install our stock valve spring. And this is super easy. You about don't even need the handle on it to press this one down. Set our keeper down in there. This is always a pain. I use a magnetic screwdriver but it's still a little bit of a pain. So we have our stock valve installed now. We can go ahead and install our head onto our block. And you only have to really torque two of the head bolts. You don't have to install everything. going to do two head bolts diagonal from each other. I'm going to torque them to spec. I'm going to go with 18 foot pounds on this test. The 
with that installed, we need to fully install our, our rockers with the adjustable push rod. You're just gonna start at any random measurement, and then we're gonna set our dial indicator on this hat, rotate it over, and see how much throw we're getting, and keep adjusting that push rod until we achieve exactly what we need. We got a 308 cam, we got 1.2 rockers, so that's gonna be 0 0.308 times 1.2. We're gonna need 0.369. So that's how much throw 0.369 we need out of this hat to know we're getting all of our available lift out of our cam. It's very important to put on your lash caps. We're running with Go Power Sports um, heavy duty lash caps. They're made for using these uh, retainers. Now we're going to just get both of these started because we have to make sure to seat our push rod in this. Like I said, this one doesn't matter. So we got this clamped down. You can use wood clamps or whatever you have. It's very hard to show you guys putting in the push rod and everything. It, it sucks to do with a camera in your face. So uh, just bolt down this one side. I went ahead and tightened up both sides and make sure your lash cap is on there and you can see we have this dial indicator setting on the hat of the the retainer of the valve. So now we can spin the engine over once and we need to set our dial indicator on zero. We need to spin our engine over and let the full cycle happen and then see what it reads. So if we start pushing this that's one, two, three, and then it's stopping at about uh, 40 or 35, but we're going backwards, if you remember. So we got 300, then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 65. If you remember, we said we needed 0 0.369 is what we we're looking for. So we only need four more thousandths throw out of that. So we need to stretch out our push rod four thousandths longer and we can pull that out put a pair of calipers we can put it at four thousandths longer than what it is now reassemble everything and check it and then zero this back out and again you can see we're going backward that's why so that would be 100 200 300 310 320 30 40 50 60 and then we're stopping at about it looks about four actually that's how you check to get your length. So what we're going to do is add uh, four more thousandths of a length to our push rod, and then we should get those results in the throw. So I took my calipers and I measured what the push rod was at that last setting, and then I added four thousandths of an inch to it. Uh, and now we're one thousandths of an inch off. So if we spin this engine over, oh, wrong way. If we spin it over, there's one, two three and then 68 is what we're landing on we're at 368 we can get one and a half thousandths longer so if we added one and a half thousandths to our push rod now uh, because it's kind of hard measuring them with these calipers um, then we'll have exactly every single bit of travel we can get out of our valve train and that's gonna make us have the optimum power we can possibly get out of that cam. And I'm trying to keep also my adjustment pretty much zeroed. Like you don't want this sink in a ton because then you're not getting the most length out of your push rod. I would rather have more length in my push rod instead of uh, adjusting out this adjuster a ton. We are setting our valve lash at zero when we're doing this. So. Just get it snug enough where you can move it, but it's not pressing on the valve any. So now we can measure the total length of this. You can see it's 5.23. So we're gonna go to 5.245. There we go, tighten the nut so it won't move. Then we can see how much, it's just a feeler gauge worth of length there. So I'm gonna set these down on my table. I'm going to adjust this out just a hair. Get it where it's... There we go. Okay, and that's it. So let's see if my calculations are correct. Dead on zero, we are. 
so there's two three come on baby look at that so that is dead on the most we can possibly get out of our valve train without going up you know with a larger lift cam or a, a higher ratio rocker it might be a different way than you was taught to do it but this works because we're getting dead accurate numbers out of this i mean that's as perfect as you can get because we're on zero let me actually adjust it one more time okay so there's one two three so we're at three hundred thousandths of an inch 350 60 69 is what we're getting there's a lot you can put into these you can do valve to piston clearance to find out how much more you can get your piston to to go up into the combustion chamber with a longer rod you can do all types of things to get maximum power because every percentage matters in a single cylinder engine more than it would on a v8 because i mean if you're talking one percent power on a v8 it's nothing you know because they're making 300 horsepower we're making very small numbers here so every small number counts and will add up to one horsepower is a big gain in one of these engines so we need to make sure we're getting all that we can so now we're good to pull this out 524.5 is what we're reading so real quick i want to say that this is going to be different for every single engine castings can be different your valve springs could set deeper down in the head everything like you need to test this on if you're doing just a regular build where you're not milling the head or let's say you just milled the head and you're running stock there is times that you can just use off the shelf uh length push rods but this is the only way you're getting maximum power out of your engine because we're getting maximum lift exactly what we're paying for we're getting out of our engine so they actually sell a push rod that is 5.26 that would be really really close to what we would need a 5.26 inch push rod so we could have bought a 5.26 inch push rod but we didn't know what we needed until we tested everything so if you're trying to achieve this exact build you're going to go with go power sports 5.260 push rods so we installed those in our head we have it sitting at zero and if we spin this engine around you can see that is one thousandths two three three fifty sixty and we're basically getting every bit of our valve travel that we possibly can get with 5.260 push rods just want to interrupt the video real fast to talk about uh, cool spring bind and that means when your cool spring is collapsed so much that the actual metal is getting into each other like that would be cool spring bind you definitely do not want cool spring bind so you want to rotate and we have the double valve spring on the exhaust side and if we rotate this over to maximum lift we are not getting cool spring bind so that's really important if you are you might have to sink the spring a little bit further in the head or do a couple little things like that also where our roller meets our valve cap our uh, lash cap we want to make sure and watch it and make sure it's traveling nice as it pushes that down and this one is in this case so you can also paint that lash cap with a sharpie or something rotate it around disassemble it and look at it and if you're getting off to the side that means your geometry is wrong and you might have too long of a push rod that's why it's really important to measure like we're doing in this video so back to the original video so again you can buy these tools super cheap you're basically going to need a valve spring compressor uh, of course a set of valve springs uh, preferably stock if you're using the adjustable push rod you're going to need that adjustable push rod you're going to need a dial indicator and a pair of calipers or some way to measure the overall length of the push rod like i said we can go with these 5.26 zeros go power sport sells a lot of different sizes and uh, if you're building a lot of engines it'd be handy to have a set of each size on the shelf because there's only a handful of sizes i think like you know six or seven different ones they make so this is how you uh, achieve the maximum lift out of your valve train and make sure you're getting the most out of your engine so make sure to check out the links in the video's description where you can find all these tools we'll have these dial indicators and stuff on amazon uh, our links will be located down below those do help to continue to make these videos come out make sure to always support go power sports because they're supporting making these videos happen so thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for this ghost all-out methanol build 
coming out on the channel very soon. We love you guys and God bless.